Hi, I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown, and as you know, we are in the thick of earnings. We got a lot of earnings today on Tuesday, October 17th, 2017, and we're going to try to do this a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a full earnings recap of all the major earnings that we had today. I am going to cover earnings from Goldman Sachs, Canadian Pacific Railway, United Health, IBM, Morgan Stanley, Johnson & Johnson, Harley Davidson. I'm going to cover all those. Now I'm going to cover those in the same order that I just said them, so whatever wizard that edits all this and puts this on YouTube. This is out of my hands, I don't know. I would imagine he's probably gonna put them down in the description, down in the description down there, and he's probably gonna give you uh, times where I, I roughly maybe start talking about a certain topic. Some of these companies I'm gonna harp on their earnings. Some of the companies we're gonna blow through, we're gonna try to go in the order that I said. So let's get started with one of the best earnings calls and the earning call I was waiting for today. I mentioned this last week. Every time the financials go ahead and do their earnings, there's one company that's like a sleeper for some reason. I don't know why, but I'm always waiting to to see the earnings call from Goldman Sachs. So Goldman Sachs EPS of $5.02 beat the street by 85 cents. How do you like them apples? Pretty good, right? Revenues of $8.33 billion. That beat the street by $790 million, and that is up 2% year over year, but still, the EPS beat is phenomenal. Now, I'm going to go through some of the divisions that they reported on their earnings call. So, investment banking revs were up 17%. Financial advisory revs were up 28%. Underwriting was flat. Institutional client uh, services revenue was down 17%. Investment and lending were up 35%. And we know Goldman's focusing a lot on investment and lending here in the last little bit. And we've noticed in the last couple of quarters that number has been jumping considerably. Uh, equity securities revenue is not not doing great. I mean, the equity security, it's just, it's, they're not making the kind of money they wish they were. This is really one of the, no, it's up, it's up, it's up 51%, 51%, Goldman Sachs. That's how you're beating on the EPS by 85 cents, up 51%. Investment management revenue up 3%. Goldman with a marvelous earnings call. I mean, it's pretty tough to debate that that's one of, if not the best financial earnings call we've had out of any of the major financial institutions. I mean, I can't say enough about Goldman Sachs. If you're thinking about doing any kind of investing, please consult licensed professional financial advisor. Do not listen to the man with the glasses on YouTube. I don't even know these videos get up here, but... More, Goldman Sachs is definitely a that that's a company to look into, right? Like I mean, at all times you should be monitoring what Goldman Sachs is doing just for your portfolio's sake. I mean that's a that's one of the 30, 40, 50 companies I'm covering every day. Every day I'm looking just because I want to look. At end of the day, two hundred and thirty six dollars and nine cents. That was off two point five, two point six, something like that. But I mean, it's a great earnings call. You you can't tell what a market's going to do in one day. Based on an earnings call, I can tell you long haul, Goldman Sachs is really figuring it out in a couple of avenues that they said they were working on. And this, this is going to go against an earnings call we have later where we never see them working on anything despite the fact that they're slipping consistently. Goldman said they were going to be working on this, especially the investment in the lending. I mean, you, and you see it up 35%. It was up in the 30s, I'm pretty sure, in the previous earnings call last quarter. It was... They're, do, they're doing a great job over at Goldman. Uh, Canadian Pacific Railway, uh, earnings per share of $2.90, beat the street by $0.05. Cents. Not bad revenue of $1.6 billion. That's up 3.2%, and it's just trucking along. It's a railway company. I mean, they're they're doing their thing up here in Canada. There's nothing too substantial for them to report. They said uh, a lot of lower levels, to be honest, the compensation and benefits are what helped them in this earnings call. And, I mean, that's not really sustainable. I mean, if you're running a solid company, you're not going to be able to be able to keep the money away from from the people that work for you for a long period of time, especially if you look like you're doing financially strong in the marketplace. So they know, they, it comes out in public that they're saying like, hey, we pulled back on our guys here, the guys on the front lines, the guys that are doing this work. You get this earnings call now that looks really good and we've been cutting back, but there comes a point in time where you're going to have to pay your boys and this isn't going to be sustainable. You're going to have to find ways to actually pick up this slack. Canadian Pacific Railway is a well-run company. I mean... You know, they're, they've had some serious management, the activist management's come in there and really shake that place up. So it knows how to generate profit. There's no doubt about that. It's very sustainable. It's a good, strong company, and it's doing a good job here, but I'm just saying to not pay your guys and to then come out in the earnings call and actually make that a real bullet point of how you were able to, to bring in a higher EPS than people expected. 
It's just not sustainable. You, you gotta, you gotta pay your guys. So, uh, moving on. United Health reported earnings today. United Health came in earnings per share of two sixty six. That beat the street by ten cents. Uh, revenues of fifty point three two billion. That was in line. Fifty point three two billion, and that was in line with estimates. Accountants, you're doing a marvelous job. That's a marvelous job. That's guesswork. That's that was just a fluke, right? But good, good on you. Up eight point seven percent revenue year over year. United Health closed the day today, two hundred and three dollars and eighty nine cents. That's up five point five three percent, and that's because. This is a great earnings call. This goes along with what I was saying with Goldman Sachs and what I've been saying all along. When your economy's roaring and you can consistently have these earnings calls coming out like this, I mean, I don't know how people haven't embraced this yet. If you're not already in the market, is this a top? I don't know. People think every quarter is going to be a top for this and they just keep topping it. We had all time highs yesterday, S&P down, NASDAQ. I mean, you got earnings like this still coming out. Let's take a look at United Health, what they're doing in the actual segments. Uh, their premiums are up 9.4%, services up 18.2%, investments up 29.3%. Come on, United Health. Come on, are you selling any health plans? Are you doing any of that? Oh, United Healthcare up 9.6%, Optum up 8.4%, everything up, up today 5.5% because that is healthcare right there. That's how you do it, fellas. I don't know if you're taking a little lesson. If you're writing your college dissertation on how to write an international healthcare company, that's it right there. Maybe just copy that earnings call, exactly what United Health is doing. Marvelous. Goldman, unbelievable. United Health, unbelievable. Carrying right along to a company that doesn't impress very often, has made an earnings call segment break down a lot easier as they've broke all of their company down into four nice structured segments, but it hides a lot of stuff that's not doing well. We're going to cover that here. IBM, earnings per share of $3.30. That beat the street by two cents. Revenues of $19.15 billion beat the street by $550 million. So that's not too bad, right? Revenues are only down 0.4% year over year. So it's not like IBM is dying on the vine, but IBM has had such a tough time just reorganizing the company. It just seems like that company got so big with so many segments and everything just got out of hand. And there were so many segments dragging other things down and they just really needed to streamline the company. They seem to be on the path to doing that. Mm, am I huge on IBM? I'm not going to sit here and rant and rave about the, the stuff I don't like about IBM, but I'm not huge on IBM either. I do think they're trying to figure things out. So they've broken down, like I said, into four segments. They've made this a little bit easier. So solutions and uh, transaction processing software is a $4.4 billion business for them. That's a 4%. Uh, consulting and global process service app, app management is a $4.1 billion business for them. That's down 2% for them. Uh, tech services and cloud. Now here's where, see this is where it gets really squirrely for me. Tech, service, and cloud is all lumped together, right? Okay, so it's an $8.5 billion business. That is massive. It's down 3%. I thought cloud was growing. I thought the cloud business was growing, right? I thought it was growing for IBM. I thought that's what IBM's big focus was, was cloud. I thought IBM was all in with understanding that, you know what, one of the major segments, just because of the way they're so entrenched everywhere, the, the, the major segment they could focus on was something like that because they've got their tentacles all over the place. They've been the forefront leader in anything computers for so long. And so the cloud was a natural progression into the next uh, next wave of technology, and they wanted to you know be a leader of it, and they definitely are. But you take a look at a segment like that, that eight point five billion dollars of their revenue, and it's down three percent. It has cloud in it. Why? Well, it's because cloud is actually up for them in revenue, 20%, but you've got a bunch of other laggards that they've paired it with inside this segment that doesn't do cloud any justice unless you break it down. You know, like it's not doing IBM any disservice because the fact of the matter is, is you still see the numbers in front of you, but when you talk about one segment paired up with all these other segments and they still just don't, it doesn't, it doesn't help the process to show an investor that's not going deeper into it to say that, hey, you know what? Something that IBM really is focusing on, which is the cloud, 
is growing, despite some of this other stuff that's weighing it down in the same segment that it's uh, that it's weighed in. It's still it's it's growing on its own. I just I just don't like the way they were doing that. When I was taking a look at this earnings call, I thought like, why is Cloud down? Went and took a look a little deeper, and I mean the answer is right there. They're just not it's not being reported the right way. I don't think personally, don't think, but it, it, you know that might be just be my particular taste. Uh, tech services and cloud, like I said, was uh, 8.5 billion on systems, hardware, uh, operating systems, all that kind of stuff. Um, that's 1.7 billion. That's up 10. percent So that's really good. This was not a bad earnings call by IBM by any stretch of the imagination like I'm not going to harp on this and tell you it's great but I'm not going to tell you this is bad in an economy that's up this is what I expect companies that are even middle ground that really aren't doing great are still finding ways to you know they're making it work because the money's going around money's being moved IBM obviously a lot of money coming in decent earnings call does it compare to United Health or Goldman Sachs I don't think so but it's a decent earnings call nonetheless we move on to Morgan Stanley Morgan Stanley earnings per share of 93 cents beat the street by 12 cents revenue of 9.2 billion beat the street by 190 million and that's up 3.3 percent year over year they closed today at 49.12 that was up 0.37 percent so it was really nominal um it wasn't the greatest earnings call this is one of those ones where you know again in a marketplace where everything's up Morgan Stanley definitely benefiting from this but are they are they as good as some of their other competitors in the same same space that they're in? They, they're not. I mean, they're just not. They, they fall kind of in the middle of the pack. They're definitely a very, very large company. But when you compare them to the best of the breed inside their same segments, I mean, they, they just don't, they don't fit the bill. But they're doing fairly well because everything's up. So you gotta you gotta love prosperity, right? I love prosperity. Anyways, investment banking revenue uh, last year uh, was a 1.1 billion dollar business. Uh, this year, 1.3 billion dollars. Sales and trading last year was a 3.2 billion dollar business. This year took a hit down to 2.9 billion. Fixed income revenue was a 1.5 billion dollar business last year. This year, 1.2 billion. Wealth management income went from a $900 million business last year to a $1.1 billion business this year, and asset management fees were the big jump, and probably the thing that saved this earnings call to make it kind of a break even, asset management fees jumped from $2.1 billion last year to $2.4 billion this year. So that made the Morgan Stanley earnings call not terrible, but it's really not, it's not hitting it, it's not hitting it where you want, like, a, I don't know, who else might hit it like you want it? Johnson and Johnson, Johnson and Johnson probably gonna knock it out of the park, right? Earnings per share of a dollar ninety beat the street by ten cents. Revenues of nineteen point six five billion beat the street by a hundred and thirty or three hundred and seven hundred thirty. 370, I gotta multiply a little bit on there, 370 million, and that's up 10.3% year over year on the revenue. Why pray tell? Are they doing something fantastic over at J&J? &J? That's a pretty steady company, right? j and is not really shaking things up too much. You never really hear them in the news doing much. If they won a lawsuit today, $72 million or something. Somebody won a lawsuit. There was an appeal. Johnson & Johnson ends up not having to pay. That's all obviously really good news. Um, so their consumer segment up 2.9%. Good growth. Pharmaceuticals up 15.4%. Medical devices up 7.1%. And then when you get down into some of the stuff they're really working on, really individual segments, uh, immunology technology up 6% and oncology up 25.1%. A lot of the other segments, very, very nominal shifts. 1% here, 1% there. It wasn't anything worth reporting on. Those ones, both huge numbers. Oncology up 25.1%. I mean, the medical device is 7.1. Pharmaceuticals, 15.5. Johnson Johnson, that's a that's a good earnings call. And that's the reason why Johnson Johnson finished the day at $140.79, up 3.43%. Because even on a day when there's marvelous earnings calls from Goldman Sachs, from United Health, from Johnson & Johnson, there is still money to go around because we're making nothing but money out here. And we finish off on an earnings call from a company that personally I don't really, ah, it is what it is. You know what? Harley Davidson reported earnings today. Earnings per share of their death machines were 40 cents. That beat the street by one cent. Revenues of 962.14 million. Beat the street by 8.8 .8 or something, 8.88, something like that. And that's down 11.7% in revenue year over year. And that continues to fall. That just continues to fall. Global sales down 4.6%. US sales down 8.1%. 
shipment revenues down 17.2%. They are making no money over at Harley Davidson. This is a brand that how it's up today, 47.52, finished the day up, up 2%, 2.04%. Even the earnings calls never tell you how they're going to fix this. I mean, motorcycle purchases around the world, period, are down. I don't know if you've got the hint yet, but if somebody decides to pull out in front of you on a motorcycle, the sky is not going to save you from dying. Motorcycles are not the smartest thing to be on to begin with, especially if you're hedging all your money on trying to, you know, plan for your retirement, plan for your kids schooling. If you're out there working hard using this, would you really get on that? I don't know. I wouldn't do it. I like to be safe. I like to try to take the safe route. Harley Davidson, it seems like the tides have kind of turned on motorcycles entirely. Sales aren't getting any better. Harley isn't able to figure it out. They're not able to compare on an earnings per share or a revenue basis. With anything near what we got from Johnson & Johnson, United Health, and Goldman, who knocked it out of the park today, I hope you guys like this uh, much larger, much longer, much more detailed, but much more streamlined ability to check out the earnings. Now you can just, if you want earnings, here you go. If you'd like to jump to a segment, you have that option as well. I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. If you haven't already, click the subscribe button, click the notification bell, thumbs up for this video, thumbs up for all the videos. And if you would like to leave a comment, we'd love to hear from you. We love hearing from you. Let me know what you're thinking about any of these earnings calls. And please, before you go, if you're going to do any investing, please consult with your licensed professional financial advisor. Do your proper due diligence. Make sure any kind of investment fits a proper allocation in your portfolio based on your risk tolerance. This is the stuff you really need to know. This is very important to me. You work hard for your money. I don't want to see you fall off a motorcycle, and I don't want you to lose your hat. That's, that's the main thing, is that the more we help each other, the more everybody's going to learn, and the more we can go out there and become prosperous. That's what we're looking to do. Like I said, I'm Cody from Wall Street Breakdown. You guys have a marvelous day.